Hello, and welcome to Digital Surgical Pathology. Slide review and sign out with Dr. Lewis Hassel. Uh, these cases are brought to you as a service of uh, Digital Anatomic Pathology Association, which is a project in conjunction with the Digital Pathology Association and PATH Presenter. Our cases today, our case is uh, drawn from the uh, realm of pancreatic pathology again. We'll be evaluating a pancreatic mass in a 55-year-old man. Here we see a low-power image, again, easily oriented to normal pancreatic parenchyma over here and areas of tumor here uh, with maybe some lymphoid tissue here and more tumor up here. As we go to higher power, we can see that this uh, pancreatic tissue is uh, relatively unremarkable. We've got islets, we've got lobules, uh, acinar epithelium. Uh, the ductal structures don't appear abnormal or stand out uh, particularly as unusual. So we'll then go to the tumor straight away, and we see a couple of different morphologies here, a more uh, racemose uh, tending area, and here may be the interface with um, partly involved lobular pancreatic parenchyma. We can see this lymph node at low power appears unremarkable. And up here, more of the tumor with sort of a uh, um, uh, cord-like or a trabecular pattern. So we'll go here to higher magnification, take a look at uh, what the uh, cells look like. We see they have fairly abundant cytoplasm, uh, round nuclei, uh, not too much variation. Um, looking a little closely, we more closely, we see they have sort of clock face nuclei here uh, with a few small nucleoli and very finely granular chromatin patterns. Um, looking around, we see a well, little bit of variation from cell to cell, but not too much in the way of pleomorphism. Um, we could look uh, and see what degree of uh, mitotic activity we might find here. Uh, again, we'll notice the finely granular chromatin and uh, mitoses. Uh, maybe that's one, but it, we don't see chromatids. It may be just a pycnotic cell. Again, here, uh, don't see finely developed uh, chromatids. Uh, let's see if we've got some uh, annotations here. No annotations. So we'll uh, skip that. Um, so the main differential here would be, is this a uh, neuroendocrine tumor? Uh, could it be a solid pseudopapillary tumor? Um, acinar carcinoma, probably not very likely with the lack of pleomorphism and the otherwise characteristic neuroendocrine features. Let's look at and see what the interaction is here between the tumor and uh, adjacent parenchyma. Here we see a little bit of the tumor cells here and the lobular pancreatic parenchyma, we can see the distinction between the uh, acinar type epithelium, which also have a uh, nice round nuclei. We can see these are a little bit different. The cytoplasm is more pale. We don't have the more eosinophilic uh, granules that you would see in the zymogen granules from a typical acinar epithelium. So it appears to be different than uh, underlying uh, normal uh, uh, pancreatic acinar tissue. See that the tumor has some perivascular infiltration. Um, here's a little bit more of the tumor extending up into here. And you might even wonder if uh, maybe we've got some lymphatic involvement in a space like this. So our leading diagnosis would be that of a neuroendocrine tumor. It looks fairly well differentiated at this stage. Let's look at a a slightly different morphology. Um, neuroendocrine tumors typically occur in the uh, tail of the pancreas, and we use the, the term uh, tumor uh, because uh, the biological malignancy, metastatic behavior is very difficult to define. Uh, we don't have a lot of instances of seeing that. But in this case, uh, what we do see is direct extension here into the spleen. As you can see, this is a normal splenic uh, parenchyma here with uh, red pulp and white pulp. And we have this neoplasm extending into the spleen. 
uh, here involving the extrasplenic uh, tissues, um, residual tail of the pancreas, and so forth in this location. And so direct extension into the spleen is a little bit unusual, but uh, certainly possible uh, with uh, neuroendocrine tumors. Um, here we again see the typical morphology, fairly uniform round nuclei, uh, granular salt and pepper chromatin, maybe a little bit of clock face appearance to the nuclei. Uh, and again, relatively few mitoses, though here is one here. I think we could define those as chromatids, uh, identifiable. Again, you get a feel for the proportion here. And maybe mitotic figures are a little bit easier to find in this particular area. Uh, we might uh, think some of these are more likely to be mitotic. Let's look at a, oh, this is the same slide. Um, so pancreatic neuroendocrine tumors are uh, basically divided into two categories, the well-differentiated tumors and the poorly differentiated tumors. Uh, in our well-differentiated tumors, of course, the behavior, as I've mentioned, is variable. They may metastasize, they may be indolent, uh, very difficult to predict based on morphology. And our grading uh, is based on the proliferation rate. Uh, that can be measured by two means, either by actually counting mitoses uh, per millimeter squared or by a KI-67 labeling index. Uh, in WHO-17, we've uh, divided these well-differentiated tumors uh, into three grades. Uh, however, with the poorly differentiated tumors, their behavior is definitely malignant, uh, and they are divided into large cell and small cell. Look a little bit more closely at uh, the differences here. Under WHO uh, 2010, we had uh, two grades of well-differentiated neuroendocrine neoplasms, a poor, poorly differentiated uh, neuroendocrine uh, tumors, uh, neuroendocrine carcinoma, small and large cell, and mixed adeno-neuroendocrine carcinomas. However, with 2017, uh, we've added a grade three well-differentiated tumor in recognition that the behavior of these tumors that appear well-differentiated but have greater than 20 mitoses per 10 high-powered fields uh, or greater than uh, 20 uh, KI-67 index uh, is uh, more likely to be uh, malignant than in the case of those uh, which have fewer than that. And here we see the division. Uh, KI-67 rate 3 to 20 is uh, grade 2. Uh, less than 3 is uh, grade 1. Uh, the carcinomas, like these well-differentiated grade 3s, also have a high proliferation index, but they have more characteristic malignant features, um, more anaplasia, uh, and more variability. Also, we've changed the category of the uh, uh, mixed carcinomas to mixed neuroendocrine and non-neuroendocrine carcinomas to uh, include the possibility that other types of carcinoma besides adenocarcinoma can be present. Let's take that uh, injunction and look at another case. Um, uh, again, we'll see here we have our tumor, uh, some chronic pancreatitis over here, uh, normal pancreas over here, and this neoplasm. Um, here we see it's forming cords, nests, and islands. It uh, has a few areas that may appear slightly glandular. Um, and here is an example of that, although this could be related to this pancreatic ductal structure. The nuclear morphology is typical for neuro neuroendocrine tumors. A granular salt and pepper chromatin, uh, occasional clock face features, and uh, small nucleoli. So uh, we would define this as a well-differentiated tumor and uh, then be phase two graded as one, two, or three. One of the features that we can see here in some of these tumors is the presence of nuclear inclusions. It's important to recognize that possibility and not to be mistaken for other tumors which show nuclear inclusion, such as uh, papillary carcinoma. Mitotic figures in these tumors can be difficult to find, but they can also be fairly subtle. And the, 
uh, mitotic figure should be reserved to those cases where you can actually see strands of uh, nuclear material uh, in uh, the uh, realm of chromatids being aligned, uh, such as we see here. Uh, in this case, it's fairly subtle. It, it looks a little bit just like a very large nucleus, but as you look at higher magnification, you can see that the individual chromatids are arrayed. Contrast that with uh, this situation where we see just really a dark uh, blob here and don't really see individual chromatids. Uh, I think this would not qualify as a mitotic figure. Another thing to watch out for this is the presence of pseudo-invasion. Um, in some cases of chronic pancreatitis, we can see um, the association of islets, such as you see here and here, closely uh, juxtaposed with uh, peripheral nerve or even a ganglion here. Um, this is not uh, perineural invasion. This is residual uh, normal islets uh, in close association with the uh, neurovascular tissue and the neural tissue of the pancreas. Going back to mitosis, here's another figure in this case. Probably this is uh, pretty close to making it for a mitotic figure. Um, so with that, you get a sense that uh, counting mitoses can be a little bit difficult. Um, the uh, grading system I flash there briefly uh, calls for 10 my high power fields. But of course, since high power fields vary, uh, the uh, standard criteria is per millimeter squared. Another mechanism to go after this is to look at um, phosphohistone 3. So with this stain, uh, you get a nice positive reaction when the phosphohistone 3 is exposed, uh, which occurs only uh, in that active mitotic uh, figure stage. And so looking for uh, this stain in some, sometimes can be used as a surrogate uh, for other uh, means of counting mitoses. So here you see everything else is negative. This would qualify as a mitosis. Now, in some of these cases, you'll want to look and particularly see if you can find hot spots. Here, for example, we can see four mito mitoses in one single high power field. So that, almost by virtue of, of the definition, moves this case into a grade two category tumor. Here's another hot spot, also in this same tumor with three mitoses per high power field. Here's another tumor, again, rounded, nested pattern, typical of neuroendocrine tumors. High magnification features show a nice round nuclei. This section's a little bit on the thick side, so it's a little bit more difficult to see. But you can see the nuclear features here are fairly typical. Looking at this case with phosphohistone 3, we don't see a lot of things standing out, but yet look here as we go to higher magnification we can see that there are really quite a few cases, quite a few cells. No annotations here. So this case also would fall into the grade two category and might even bump up into the grade three category of uh, cells. So we would want to make sure that our count was correct and so forth. So um, in summary, that's a discussion of cases for today. These are well-differentiated neuroendocrine tumors. We've given you some examples of grade one, uh, at least one example of grade two, and possibly an example of a grade three tumor um, to illustrate how uh, these mitotic counts can be difficult, uh, the utility of possibly using phosphohistone three. So thank you for joining me today. If you have questions or comments, I uh, welcome those. And I'll look forward to uh, talking to you next time.